spent about 525 bucks on these three boxes of about a dozen untested digital cameras. Since all of these cameras are untested, we're going to go through testing them uh, and ascertaining value, and hopefully I can hit my target of $1,000 in estimated value on all of these cameras. Let's jump right in. First box, here we go. I'm very, very excited about this camera because it's a camera that I do not see very often at all. And I'm just hoping that we test it and it's working. Because all of these cameras are untested, you just never really know. Uh, kind of depends on the supplier you buy from and the overall condition and the pictures that you look at. Or if you're buying in person, obviously you can check the condition there. But um, I buy about half of the cameras that I buy uh, through online sources. Uh, some of these are from auctions. Um, some of them are buy it now. This particular camera I actually bought on eBay in the untested section. And uh, physical condition of this camera looks great. Look at this beauty. It is in great shape. This is a Samsung EX2F. Uh, pretty high-end premium point-and-shoot compact camera that Samsung released in 2012. When this camera came out, it was directly competing with Panasonic Lumix DMC LX series. And it was really a great compact uh, travel street photography camera. Let's go ahead and find a battery for this because most all of these are untested. A lot of the times they don't come with a battery and even if they do, a lot of the times the battery is dead. Ooh, got a memory card in there too. This looks just like it's in phenomenal shape. Now I will say a common issue with uh, Samsungs of this generation, including the Samsung WB350, which is probably most known for, is a mode dial issue where when you turn the camera on, the mode will just automatically switch without you actually physically moving it. Um, so hopefully we don't have that issue. Ooh, it does power on. It looks really nice. And sorry for the delay in the video production, guys. Uh, a little behind because of tax season. Uh, normally I procrastinate a little bit and filed in the last week like I tend to do. Lens is moving well. Let's see, show you guys the LCD here. And you'll notice there's a lot of manual controls uh, on this camera. This is actually a manual control wheel here, and it's a push button as well and go to function. You can actually adjust with that toggle wheel. You're able to select ISO and then use the toggle wheel to scroll through various ISOs as you're shooting. So you don't have to come back to this menu and do it each time. That's very cool. Another really, really neat thing that you might have seen there, and I'll go show you in the menu real quick. is there's actually an ND filter built into this camera. So if you go to ND filter and select on, it'll toggle that ND filter inside the camera to on, and then you'll have a neutral density filter to use. I'll go ahead and leave it on and we'll do a little bit of testing with this camera. So what I'm testing, I'm just making sure that the autofocus is working and the flash is working. And in here in a little bit, I'm gonna actually take this camera outside and we'll get some pictures taken with it. Pretty limited 3.3x optical zoom, but again, this isn't a camera that uh, you're going to be using to take a lot of telephoto images. Flash is charging. Sometimes it can take a few seconds for that flash to fully charge and then fire. There we go. Boy, this camera's in great shape. I'm not seeing any mode selection issues. So when I move it to smart and then back to P and then to A, it's staying in the correct mode. Very good news. And uh, this camera has a super fast lens. Uh, when this camera was made, it was actually marketed as the fastest compact lens uh, on a point and shoot camera, f1.4. So takes in a lot of light um, and does a really, really great job. And because of that, a lot of the times what you notice is the very front of the focal area is in focus and then off to the edges, you get a little bit blurred. And this camera's gotten a little more popular over the last few years. Certainly not as much as a lot of the Fuji films, like the X10, X20, uh, X100. Uh, but the value has uh, gone up recently. So in really nice shape like this, if you pair this with a charger and a memory card, you'd be looking at a value of about $250 plus on the Samsung EX2F. This is a camera that I've only sold two of before in the used market. So very, very uncommon, super cool camera to start out with and uh, happy to have it working and uh, tested. Also has a cool articulating screen and it has Wi-Fi. So this camera is full of all sorts of cool gadgets when it came out in uh, 2012. 
And again, our target on all of these is gonna be about $1,000. So if we can get to that, we'll roughly double our money before expenses and I'll end up profiting a couple hundred bucks. All right, next up, I know what's in this box. It is a Nikon DSLR camera with a pretty nice telephoto lens. Hardest box I've had to open in quite a while. That's what we got there. this. All right, so we have a cool Nikon D90 DSLR cam with a Tamron SP 70 to 300 millimeter telephoto lens. We can set it down here. There we go. So pretty big overall setup here in addition to the lens hood. So you can take this off if you so desire and put it in this way. Uh, overall condition wise, it looks pretty good. And that's one of the reasons why I bought it. If I see something that's in really poor condition with a broken screen or clearly has issues, generally that's not something I would typically buy. So there's a lot of screening that goes in before I actually buy any of this stuff, even though it, most of what I buy is actually untested. And we've got an overall decent looking uh, body with a lens that looks to be in really quite nice shape. I don't see any issues with haze or mold visible inside of the glass when you look at it under the light. It looks really quite nice. So we've got a lens that hopefully is working and we've got a body that looks to be in decent shape. Um, the biggest issues that I've seen with this are errors during shooting with the D90 and I've sold a lot of D90s. The D90 came out in 2008, takes really nice pictures and you can use a variety of Nikon and aftermarket lenses like Tamron on it that fit with the Nikon F mount. This particular lens has a AF-MF autofocus manual focus toggle, as well as VC, which is uh, vibration compensation. And this is a really nice lens to have for nature shots, uh, for wildlife, vacations. For sports, it's a little bit slow from my experience for autofocusing, so probably not a super great lens for sports. Let's throw a battery in here and get it tested. Uses the Nikon ENL3 battery and regular SD card from memory. There is one in there. Power on here. And then the menu appears to be working as well. Let's try taking a few pictures inside here and see if it, uh, if it works. And no hat today, so no issues with the bill, uh, with my flash getting stuck in and hitting the bill. And you'll hear a little bit of noise during the autofocus and that's a normal process as that uh, VC engages and uh, there's a little bit of whirring or focus noise. Uh, it's, it's common. And I'm gonna go ahead and go outside with this camera as well. And uh, we'll take some pictures with it and pop them up on the screen so you guys can see what uh, this camera and lens kit is capable of doing. Um, the other neat thing about Nikons uh, is it's super easy to check their shutter count. You just remove the SD card, put it into an SD card reader on your computer. And then I use a website called cameraShutterCount.com which gives free shutter counts. Um, and I found it to be pretty reliable over the years and uh, we'll test that too. So I'll grab the SD out of here and I'll go run and check the shutter count real quick. All right, shutter count on this is just shy of 56,000. And I wanna say this is rated to around 100K actuations. So still ha should have quite a bit of life, but clearly whoever the prior owner was actually took quite good care of it because it doesn't have a lot of the issues that are common with a shutter count that high. So value on the body alone, you're looking at about a hundred bucks in good working condition. And a lot of that value will depend upon what accessories are included with it and what the shutter count is. This lens here, this Tamron 70 to 300, you're looking at a value in really nice shape of around 150 bucks with this big lens hood. So first two cameras, very good. And uh, based on their condition, I was hoping that they would be working and they are. So uh, that's a great start. And this next box is going to have a fair number of cameras, I think around 10 from what I saw in the pictures. And I paid a fair amount for this box, so hopefully we've got some working cameras. Alright, last box, here we go. Got some bubs. And got some cams. Not, not very well packed this box. Go ahead and set it on the ground and we'll pull from there. All right, first up, ay, 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 yikes. Got a Canon Rebel SL2. This thing is in rough shape. 
Oh, and the, sh the battery door is completely sheared off. I don't even know how you would get that out. Okay, so we've got a lot of issues with this body. We've got a ton of wear here. We've got the mirror stuck up. And we have a ton, a lot of wear around the, uh, the mount area as well. And the battery door itself is sheared off and broken. Um, so this is a camera that honestly, I would say uh, there's a 95% chance that this camera's not working. Uh, in good shape, the Rebel SL2 body is going to have a value of around $200, $250. Uh, this, unfortunately, uh, in its current shape, untested for parts on a website like eBay in the United States, you'd be looking at a value in the $60 range, maybe a little bit more. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that down for the value. Uh, that's a bummer. I didn't see, I only saw one picture of this and it was super hard to tell condition. So, dang. All right, next up. We have a Sony DSC W130, which is a pretty old, probably 15 year old Sony Cybershot. And, oh, we've got a big ding on the viewfinder here. It's like uh, smashed in there. And otherwise condition looks fair. Got some wear around the lens rim. Um, let's go ahead and put an NPBG1 battery in there and fire up and see if she works. Oh, there's a Memory Stick Pro Duo in there as well. A little bit of standalone value in the cards. Um, this would have a value of around five to seven bucks. Make sure you put it in the right way. Does power on. Lens glass actually looks decent. Just a little bit of dust in there. We'll get that cleaned up. Lens moves in and out fine. That looks good. I'm in auto mode. I'm gonna try taking a picture. There we go. Okay. So we've got a working camera here. Uh, that viewfinder is dented, but uh, is still viewable through. So value of this camera, even though it is in kind of rough physical condition, uh, if you, I pair this with a charger and include that memory card, it would have a value of around 50 bucks. Ooh, nice. Yep. Not so much the body, but the lens is a little bit nicer. So we've got a Nikon D40X body. This was released around the same time as that D90 a little bit before. Uh, it's been about 16 years since this D40X was released. This Nikon 35 1.8G lens has been in production for a really long time by Nikon and fits on uh, almost all of these current generation and newer Nikon DSLR cams. Uh, condition looks to be pretty good, not seeing any issues with the lens glass. Uh, rear looks good and I don't see any haze or mold visible. Uh, body looks to be in decent shape as well. A little bit of dust visible through the viewfinder that's on the focus screen. Normally that doesn't affect the picture quality, of course. Um, so that all looks good. There is a little bit of wear on the screws there. And by the battery door as well. Um, let's put a battery in there. It uses the Nikon e 9 I've got one over here, hopefully. Yeah, there's one. And regular SD card from memory. Powered up. And this, just like the D90, we should be able to get a shutter count as well. And I think the shutter estimate on this is 75 to 100K, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen it over 100K in many situations. Shutter's firing, autofocus on the lens is working, and everything appears to be looking good. This is a nice lens because on this APS-C size sensor on the D40X, uh, the focal range is equivalent to right around 50 millimeters. Um, and uh, it's really good length for portraits. All right, that's great. So value on the D40X body, not great. This is one of the lower price point DSLRs that Nikon released. Okay, shutter count of this camera is 9,665. So under 10K on the shutter. Uh, so value of the body alone is gonna be about $75 if you pair it with a charger, USB cable, and a memory card. And this Nikon 35 millimeter 1.8 G lens, I sell all the time um, in nice working condition like this, probably just a little bit north of 100 bucks. Around 175 for this kit in good working shape. With that camera, we're at 785 I show as estimated value. And that's just based on my personal experience of selling on eBay. 
I've sold over 25,000 items uh, in the last seven years, and I have a pretty good sales history on a lot of these items. So I have a pretty good idea of the estimated value and what they actually sell for. Of course, there's an overall range, and if you're watching this video in three months, six months, or a year, uh, the values may have gone up or down depending upon supply and demand. All right. Next up, we've got a Kodak Easy Share M583. Uh, normally, yeah, 14 megapixel. Uh, this was released, oh, probably in 2012 range, would be my guess. Uses the KLIC, I think, 7001 battery. Lens moves out. Got some lens scratches that are visible. Not good. And there is a big hair slash dust speck visible in the pictures that's not on the LCD and is more present as you zoom out. So normally that's a little bit of dust inside the sensor. There are a few things that you can try to remedy that problem. But given that we've got lens glass scratches and the spot in the pictures taken, uh, let me show you what, what exactly that looks like. There's the, pic the picture that I just took and the spot is right there. Uh, so unfortunately, the value of this is gonna be pretty pretty limited. May have a nominal value, but this is one that I would probably put in a part slot and sell as is for parts. It's a bummer. If this was in good working shape, it would have a value of about 50 bucks. Another one uses the same battery, actually. We've got an Olympus Stylus 770SW. This is a early generation waterproof camera that Olympus released before the newer Olympus TG6, TG7 series and before Olympus became OM design, at least in cameras. Okay. Power's on. A lot of, see, a lot of the times I see uh, faulty sensors on this resulting in purple pictures and purple splotches. I am seeing that on this as well. Yeah, purple. Great. A lot of the times, I guess, means for this camera too. Unfortunately, um, there may be times where the purple won't show on the screen, but in the pictures taken, it does actually show up. Um, and unfortunately, because of that failing sensor, uh, likely failing sensor, this one's not gonna have any value either. In good working shape, this sells for 35 to 45, depending on what you include with it. Oh, let's do, we got a couple purple cameras in here. That's cool. Purple, purple. Double A's in here. This is a Kodak EasyShare C195. Sell this camera all the time in silver, purple, and green. Pretty basic little, uh, probably 10, 12 year old Kodak EasyShare camera. Does exactly what you need it to do. Takes decent pictures. And the flash is firing and the pictures look good. So we've got a working camera here and uh, the purple does add a little bit of value. I've talked about that a few times in prior videos, but if you get into colors like pink and purple and green and more unusual colors, normally that'll add five or 10 or 15 bucks depending on the original value of the camera. So value of this guy is gonna be about 45 bucks. Oh no. Canon PowerShot SD1200, and that is always an ominous sign uh, when you're looking at a camera that has a lens stuck out and it's not turned on. Generally a bad sign, but uh, let's grab a charge battery and see what this, this puppy does. Uses the Canon NV6L battery. I would give this a 5% chance of working. Ah! Yeah, lens error. Uh, lens is stuck out. Uh, but we've got a lens error here, and uh, those are pretty tough to fix generally from my experience. So that's a bummer. In good working shape, this camera sells for $100 to $150, depending on what's included and what color it is. So uh, this one, unfortunately, won't have any value. Maybe like 15 or 20 bucks in the part, part section on eBay. We're down to four cameras. We're shy of our target. Uh, we gotta got to get some value out of these next ones to hit that $1,000 target. We've got a Canon PowerShot SD880 in gold. And this is a cool camera. Heavier than it looks, too. Pretty well built. 
and doesn't have that side panel like the Canon PowerShot SD790 that has a habit of falling off. Um, so this one typically holds up a little bit better um, and takes nice pictures. Uses a Canon NB5L battery. Glass has a little bit of wear, not wear per se, but uh, just needs to be cleaned. I'm, I don't see any scratches on it, so that looks good. And then we've got the display here. So we've got a camera that powers on at least. Let's see if it's otherwise functioning. Lens is moving in and out fine. That lens is noisy but normal for Canon power shots of this era. What I'm noticing is that the LCD has uh, maybe a little bit of burn in or something. Uh, it's got a purple splotch in the center. And normally display related issues are just on the display, right? They don't actually affect the pictures taken. Um, but if you have questions or if you're curious, uh, what I try to do is take a picture with a memory card, put it in a computer and actually see, just double check. And I'll do that for this one as well, but uh, everything looks good. It looks like it just a display issue. And otherwise the camera looks to be in pretty decent shape. The flash fires and autofocus is working. So we've got a camera with a little minor cosmetic issue. Um, but nothing that should affect the actual picture quality. And the value of this camera uh, has actually gone up a fair amount over the last few years as well. Used to sell this in the $50 range five or six years ago, and now it sells for around 100 bucks if you include a charger, a USB cable, and a memory card with it. Uh, in really super shape with a box, I've seen this sell for upwards of 150. We're at 9.30, and we've got three cameras left, so hopefully we can get there. Uh, we've got a Samsung ST77 in a vibrant purple. A lot of purples in here. Okay, let's uh, see. This uses a Samsung BP70 battery. I think I've got one there. Yeah. Very common Samsung battery that Samsung used for a number of years on a variety of models. So pretty compact, as you can see. Very, very small form factor. Hopefully this camera's working. Lens moves out. Lens glass looks okay. A little bit of noise. Ah, yeah, we've got dust. Dust visible in pictures and probably dust in the sensor. See what I'm talking about there, there, and there. So that's really unfortunate. So that will affect the pictures, obviously. Um, I'll try to do a little more work on this and see if I can try a couple tricks. There's a vacuum trick you can do. Um, obviously you could do a complete tear down and rebuild. Uh, I don't have time to do that because I do so much volume in cameras, uh, but there are some people that do that. So uh, unfortunately this camera, let's just try it and see if the flash fires and it takes a picture. It does take a picture. Let's see if we can get the flash to fire. Because if it's otherwise working, then this camera may have, still have a little bit of value. You can do it. Okay, flash fires does take pictures. So yeah, this is gonna have a bit of value. Um, in good working condition, this sells for 60 to 70. Uh, but in working condition with the black spots visible and pictures taken, you're looking at a value of around 20 bucks on this camera. Okay, next up we've got a Canon PowerShot G2. Wow, throwback. Uh, this also appears to be in pretty good shape. Lens could use a little bit of a cleaning. I'll do that here in a little bit. But otherwise, cosmetically, I've seen these in such beat up conditions over the years, and I've sold dozens of these uh, Canon PowerShot G2s, as well as the G3, G4, G7, G9, G12. They made a lot in this series uh, that eventually turned into really cool, uh, pretty compact cameras that, that take excellent uh, manual photos. Uh, this uses the Canon BP511 battery, one of those here, does power on, very well built camera actually, and reminds me a bit of Contax, at least in the, the color scheme that they use, kind of silver gray, let's go ahead and try taking a few pictures and uh, see, the zoom is right here, fairly quiet, let's try taking a picture, oh yeah, Nice. Okay, autofocus is working and flash is firing on this Canon PowerShot G2. Uh, and if you were to pair this camera with a charger, USB cable, and the card, it looks like it's probably like a 256 or a 512 megabyte card, you'd be looking at a value in the $50 range on this camera. And I think with that, we just hit a thousand. 
uh, just hit the target. Um, so that's great news. And we've got one camera left. The last camera. What do we got here? We've got a Canon PowerShot SX40. And this is a bridge super zoom camera with a 35X optical. And I believe this uses the Canon NB10L battery. It's got one in there. It is. Let's see if it works. No. Oh, there's also some wear on the buttons there. Normally you can get that cleaned off with some of the cleaning solutions that I use. Uh, if you haven't yet, you can check out uh, the links that I have down below. Um, if you're needing to clean anything, electronics, uh, I have some recommendations there as well as AA batteries that I, that I use and I like. Um, and any purchase you make on that gives a little, little bit back to me, uh, so I really appreciate that. If at any point you're considering making a purchase on Amazon, uh, just click one of those links down below and I get a little bit back and it helps me continue to make videos like this. Okay, we got a battery in there and it is powering on and does appear to be working. We've got the LCD here. And let's try, uh, try taking a few pictures. A little bit noisy on the lens. Okay. All right, well, we've got loose glue on the outer rim and that's a super common issue with this in the Canon SX50 as well as the Canon SX30. So I'm gonna have to get some glue out and fix that before I were to list it. You can sell it at a little bit of a discount if you're not into trying to fix that. It's a super, pretty dang easy fix. So you can see where the glue kind of loosened up over time. It just was glued in a few, just a handful of spots and it came loose. So that doesn't affect the actual performance um, as you can see unless it was bent and it was covering that, then it may, uh, but in this case it's not. So let's try uh, taking a few pictures. Guess I'm never really looking at the camera whenever I'm taking a picture with the SX40. Okay, flash fires and camera is in working condition. Autofocus is working. One of the more common issues I see with this is actually deadlines on the LCD, which again, doesn't affect the picture quality, but uh, does affect the value. And in this case, the display looks good. So we've got a working Canon PowerShot SX40 that needs a little bit of cleaning, um, but I sell this camera all the time and I'd pair it with a charger, USB cable, and a memory card, you'd be looking at a value of around $90 on this. So we just went over the target that I had set and that was great to see. Really appreciate you watching as usual and don't forget to get out there, have some fun, take some pictures.